Hello, my name is Hannah Fisher. I'm the Clinical Specialist Physiotherapist in Respiratory and Critical Care for Providence Healthcare. Welcome to the post-COVID-19 Recovery Education Series. Today we will be talking about breathlessness after COVID-19. This is Module 1 of three modules. Today you will learn about respiration and lung anatomy and physiology, about breathing patterns, how does COVID-19 affect the lungs, why do I feel breathless, and advice on how to manage your breathlessness. Your respiratory system is the network of organs and tissues that help you to breathe. This system helps your body absorb oxygen from the air so your organs can work effectively. It also removes waste gases such as carbon dioxide from your blood when you exhale. It allows you to talk and smell. It brings the air to body temperature and provides the humidity that your body needs. And it protects your airways from harmful substances and irritants such as air pollution, smoke and dust. Breathing is the process that brings oxygen in the air into your lungs and moves oxygen through your body. Our lungs pass the oxygen through to our bloodstream, where it's carried off to the tissues and organs. Our lungs also take carbon dioxide from our blood and exhale it out of our lungs into the air. Here we will go through some of the important parts of the anatomy of the respiratory system. The sinuses are hollow spaces in the bones of your head. The sinuses help to regulate the temperature and humidity of the air you breathe in, as well as to lighten the bone structure of the head and to give tone to your voice. The nasal cavity is the best entrance for outside air into your respiratory system. The hairs that line the inside wall are part of the air cleansing system. Air can also enter through your oral cavity, especially if you have a mouth breathing habit or your nasal passages may be temporarily blocked. The adenoids are overgrown lymph tissues at the top of the throat. The tonsils are lymph nodes in the wall of your pharynx. The pharynx collects incoming air from your nose and passes it downward to your trachea. The epiglottis is a flap of tissue that guards the entrance to your trachea. It closes when anything is swallowed to ensure it goes into the esophagus and stomach. The larynx contains your vocal cords. The esophagus is the passage leading from your mouth and throat to your stomach. The trachea is the passage leading from your pharynx to the lungs. The ribs provide support and protect your chest cavity. The trachea divides into two main bronchi, one for each lung. The bronchi in turn sub subdivide further into bronchioles. The right lung is divided into three lobes and the left lung is divided into two lobes. The pleura are two membranes that surround each of your lungs and separate the lungs from your chest wall. The bronchial tubes are lined with cilia that have a wave-like motion. This motion carries mucus upward and out into the throat where it is either coughed up or swallowed. The mucus catches and holds much of the dust, germs and other unwanted matter that has invaded your lungs. Your lungs get rid of the mucus through coughing. The diaphragm is a muscle that separates your chest cavity from your abdominal cavity. The smallest section of the bronchi are called bronchioles, at the end of which are the alveoli. The alveoli are very small air sacs that are the destination of air that you breathe in. The capillaries are blood vessels that are embedded in the walls of the alveoli. Blood passes through the capillaries brought to them by the pulmonary artery and taken away by the pulmonary vein. While in the capillaries, the blood moves carbon dioxide into the alveoli and takes up oxygen from the air into the alveoli. When you breathe in, signals from the respiratory center in your brain travel down the nerves to your diaphragm and other respiratory muscles. The diaphragm contracts and is pulled flat, pushing out the lower rib cage and abdomen. At the same time, the muscles between your ribs contract and pull your rib cage up and out. 
This expands the chest and draws air into the lungs. Air is pulled into your nose or mouth and into your trachea. The trachea divides into two bronchi, supplying the right and left lungs. The air passes down the airways through the bronchioles until the air reaches the alveoli. Breathing out when resting is mostly a passive process. The muscles you use to breathe in now relax and the elastic lung tissue recoils, pushing the air out. This changes when you exert yourself, such as when you are exercising. Your body needs to move air in and out of the lungs more quickly, so your abdominal muscles provide the main drive for exhaling, along with the intercostal muscles. The most important muscle used for your breathing is the diaphragm. It is a strong, flat mus muscle which is attached to the lower edges of the ribs and spine. It separates the chest from the abdomen and is shaped like the dome of an umbrella when it's relaxed. A good breathing pattern involves the lower ribs which flare out gently when you breathe in, helping the diaphragm to flatten when it contracts. The upper chest area should remain relaxed. The diaphragm muscle contracts about 18,000 times in 24 hours. It doesn't fatigue unlike the muscles around your upper chest and shoulder girdle area. Utilising your diaphragm for breathing is the most energy efficient way to breathe and can help with managing fatigue. What is breathlessness? It's an unpleasant sensation of uncomfortable, rapid or difficult breathing. It's often described as feeling puffed, short of breath or winded. It is called dyspnea. It may make your chest feel too tight to inhale and exhale fully. It can leave you feeling like you're gasping for air. It can happen when you are active or resting and it can come on gradually or suddenly. It can cause anxiety, leading to changes in your breathing rate. Breathlessness is the most common persistent symptom after acute COVID-19 infection, ranging from 42 to 66% prevalence at 60 to 100 days post initial infection. Those who have had severe acute COVID-9 infection, requiring high levels of oxygen or ventilation, are at the highest risk for long-term complications. We are continuing to learn how COVID-19 affects your lungs as more research is published. Recovering lung function is possible, but it can take weeks to months after the acute infection has resolved. Why am I breathless? Evidence suggests that how breathless you feel doesn't always match up that well with the results of lung function tests and scans. This is because it's not just lung function that affects how out of breath you feel. Breathlessness is also deeply influenced by the way you breathe, your lifestyle, and how you think and feel about your breathing. There is a complex interaction between the pathophysiological, psychological, and biomechanical causes, and the triggers and issues will be different for everyone. For example, chronic mouth breathing often occurs with chronic rhinosinusitis and can therefore result in breathing pattern changes. Saline nasal rinses can ease sinus congestion and restore nasal breathing. Chronic pain and chronic hyperventilation often coexist. Pain can cause an increase in respiratory rates generally. Moreover, patients with abdominal or pelvic pain often splint their abdominal muscles, which results in upper chest breathing. When, when treating those with chronic pain, it's helpful to work towards achieving nose abdominal breathing as well as promoting relaxation. The term breathing pattern disorder is used to describe when there is an alter, alteration to the normal breathing, the normal pattern of breathing that results in short or longer lasting sy symptoms. It's often related to overbreathing and breathing more than what the body needs. Overbreathing can be a normal reaction to a range of stimuli and in the case of prolonged stresses or repeated triggers. 
COVID-19 seems to be one of them triggers where breathing patterns change during the acute illness without returning to normal. This new way of breathing becomes the new normal. Issues can range from simply using the wrong muscles, breathing from only the upper chest, mouth breathing, breathing fast, taking breaths that are too deep to hyperventilation syndrome. Breathing pattern disorders are a complex syndrome that is difficult to define, but it's described as a debilitating symptom with a negative impact on quality of life, psychological well-being and functional status. There is limited data on how common breathing pattern disorders are among people with long COVID. The causes, long-term implications or best practice for managing people with breathing difficulties. However, many people are still symptomatic many months after infection with COVID-19. A holistic package of care is recommended to address ongoing breathlessness. Symptoms may include yawning, fainting, chest pain, sighing, difficulty talking, headaches, tight chest, coughing, blurred vision, palpitations, pins and needles, panic attacks, coughing, air hunger and dizziness. Breathlessness is not only a physical symptom, it's also a feeling that affects the way we think and act. When we get breathless and anxiety levels are heightened, our body can perceive this as a threat or as being in danger. This then activates our body's fight or flight response. More adrenaline is released into the blood from the adrenal glands in the kidneys, and this can result in several symptoms, including feeling hot, panicky, or overwhelmed. Your chest might feel so tight that you cannot breathe in properly. You might feel you're suffocating and you need to take deep breaths but can. You might feel breathing is very hard work and exhausting. Trembling legs, dry mouth, dizziness, increasing heart rate and palpitations, the urge to pass urine, or butterflies and nausea. This can cause a vicious cycle of breathlessness, anxiety and activity avoidance which can lead to increased breathlessness. What can I do to help? The good news is that there are breathing techniques you can use to breathe more efficiently and to feel in control of your breathing. When you are short of breath, you need to relax to control your breathing. Remember that breathlessness is uncomfortable, but not in itself harmful or dangerous. Should you become short of breath, Try to follow these steps. Keep calm and lean forward. Leaning forward moves your abdominal content, contents forwards and allows more room for your diaphragm to contract and get air in and out of your lungs. Relax your shoulder and neck muscles. Allow them to flop and drop. Breathe in as fast as you need to initially and breathe out through pursed lips. Imagine you are gently blowing out candles on a cake. This will help you to fully empty your lungs so you do not hyperventilate. When you are able to, try to breathe in through your nose and continue breathing out through pursed lips. This will help you to move air in and out of your lungs more efficiently. Aim to breathe out for twice as long as you breathe in Tell yourself, I can do this. I've had this feeling before and I know it will go away. I am not in danger and this will pass. And once you have regained control of your breathing, continue with your activity.